Hi there, and welcome to my technical sound design demo. The purpose of this project is to showcase some techniques and systems that I'm using to implement audio, and ultimately making it even more immersive. I'll be mainly focusing on three different sound phenomena, which are acoustics, real-time early reflections, ambiences, and explosions. So let's get started. The acoustics of a space contribute to how we perceive the environment we're in. It gives us information of the size, atmosphere, and materials of the space, but also how the sound propagates through that space. There are many ways of simulating acoustic early reflections. The problem with these models are that they are either static representations of a space, or they're very demanding in terms of computational resources needed. They're also not very well suited for games. This implementation is using Audio Kinetics Wise and their Reflect plugin. This is a geometry informed plugin that dynamically renders early reflections based on the listener and emitter proximity to reflective surfaces. Please note that the effect you're hearing is exaggerated for the purpose of this demo. For this purpose, I'm using a combination of early reflections mixed with a reverb to simulate the environment around the listener. This is all done in real time. So we can, for example, hear the direct signal and clearly distinguish the reflections coming from the geometry as it's bouncing around while we're changing the listener's rotation. The system also takes abstraction, occlusion, and diffraction rules into account. For example, here the geometry is blocking and unblocking the sound source. It also reacts to dynamic changes done to the environment. For the base layer of the ambience, I've just created a static loop for this purpose. On top of this, I have two different wind layers. One wind layer has a fixed position while the other one is positional. Obviously we can make this way more dynamic if we'd like to, but sometimes it's better to keep things simple in my opinion. The ambience is however reacting to the listener's position and distance to certain objects. For example, the distance to the ground. So the higher up the listener is, we're going to hear a more intense wind layer, and the ground base layer will fade out. Another thing that I've done is with the directional wind layer. So you might want to use headphones for this one. I've attached the directional wind source to an object, which has its position randomly updated. In this case, it's between 10 and 20 seconds. Obviously in real life, it wouldn't change this often, but as we rotate the listener, we will hear the wind louder in one ear. Something to note about wind is that it's actually one of those sounds which make no sound at all. What I mean by this is that wind is an implicit production. 
it is other things that are obstructing the wind that causes the sound. When the air that is moving is hitting an object, for example, we introduce turbulence. It is the irregularities on the surface of these objects that produce the sound of the wind. Think of it as a microscopic Helmholtz resonator or a skyline diffuser. One way that we could improve this implementation is to create a procedural wind model, which models the resonating behaviors, for example. Here are a couple of examples of physical models that are simulating wind how, which is the resonance we talked about previously. Leaves rustling. And branches, which simulates the whistling element of the wind. For this use case, I'm using pure data and this patch is based on Andy Farnell's work on physical modeling. All of these examples are based on noise filters, which are manipulated with various techniques based on the global wind speed, which we see right here. Now, if I would implement this in a game engine, I would use something like the Heavy Compiler by Enzian Audio. You can read more about it here. Unfortunately, it is deprecated by now, but it still works. I've compiled my pure data patch through the heavy compiler and created a plugin of that one that I'm then using in WISE. All of the parameters in my patch that I've exposed to heavy are showing up here. So the nice thing about this is that we can tie RTPCs to these parameters and control them from our game. Explosions are interesting to implement because of the variety of the sound. I've divided the sound up into near, mid, and far explosions. They will play differently depending on how far away the player is from the explosion. In the close scenario, the player will hear way more detail. The high end of the explosion is more pronounced, the debris scatter, and the tinnitus to simulate the sheer volume of the sound. As the initial blast fades out, we can also hear the tail interacting with the environment around us, bouncing off different surfaces in the distance. In the mid-explosion, we hear a variation of the initial explosion sound, obviously this time further away and also less pronounced. The far explosion is yet another asset. This time we have very little directivity. Still enough to distinguish where the initial blast is coming from, but not enough to pinpoint it exactly. The tail is more enveloping now as well, since that's the focal component of the sound. The explosion is also aware of the geometry between the listener and the sound source. In this case, if there's a wall blocking the sound, we'll hear an obstructed sound. Another property of the explosion is the effect it has on objects the force is interacting with. I call them incidental sounds, these are sounds that are triggered as a result of the explosion. Imagine that you have a window or a sheet of metal that is a bit further away from the blast. That surface will start to resonate because of the force that is applied to that object. So the way that I've implemented this is that I have a sphere that is projecting outwards from the explosion based on a radius value. This sphere will then return all the objects that it's either touching or is inside the sphere. In this case, I also check if the objects are incidental objects, so that we don't start hearing an incidental sound from the ground, for example. I then calculate the blast force, where I linearly assume the force on an object. So what this means is that if an object is further away from the blast center, it will have a smaller force exerted on it. I also calculate the time difference it takes for the incidental sound to reach the listener. This way I can get realistic behaviors of incidental objects resonating at different times based on force and distance. Finally, all of this data is then sent to WISE and in this case to drive different RTPCs. <laughs> 
Thank you so much for watching my video. Now, if you want to learn more about me, you can head over to these links. And if you want to try out the project, just uh, go to my GitHub and download it. And if you have any questions, just send me a message. Thanks.